My friend, it's been too long. I haven't seen you in quite some time. Thank you for answering my summons. Come, have a seat by the fire. I've just loaded my dragonbone longpipe with a bowl of Larry's best blessings. Let me fill you in before we discuss the task at hand. It's been five years since the Great Battle of Nefredil, and even longer since any of us have enjoyed peace, or relative peace, that is. Many of us still willingly seek out danger. Perhaps it is our desire to make the land, our home, a safer place. Maybe it's just all we've known. Or perhaps it's the coin that can be earned. Though gold was never the driving force for any of us in the end. Nefredil as a whole is doing better than any could have hoped. Peace between the two kingdoms of Falkenheim and Brandberg has led to prosperity and peace for most. Falkenheim especially has flourished. With the looming threat of invasion put behind them, they have re-established themselves as the dominant port of trade in the region. The town itself has grown twofold since the battle, though it will be many years, decades even, for the effects of the death of so many of its formidable fighters during the war to subside. The shaman, the blind prophet that led Falkenheim for so long, passed away peacefully shortly after the return of its remaining warriors. Balder now leads the town into the future, with his half-son Trevor at his side. When he's not out training with the Golden Knight himself, that is. But we'll get back to that in due time. As for the guild, you've never seen a happier man than Suds after the victory was achieved. We'll be the most famous guild in the lands. We can charge double for contracts, triple. He was ecstatic. You wouldn't recognize Sanctuary anymore. A contingent of Bjorn's dwarves stayed to help rebuild. The inn looks less like an inn and more like a dwarven fortress now, but you won't find me complaining about that. The barracks now extends downward four more floors. Merkit's alchemy garden is now a wizard's tower, complete with a dimension door capable of teleporting someone to the nicest elven garden anyone's ever seen. Oivin Smithy is now the top producer of adamantine arms and armor in the mainland with a direct supply of the precious material coming straight from Axome. At Sanctuary's heart, the Fey Tree still stands tall and beautiful, acting as a constant reminder of the peace, beauty, and serenity Barthur helped to bring to the lands, as well as a reminder of his sacrifice in the battle that surely saved the lives of many, including my own. A large statue stands outside the front gate, a statue depicting two friends laughing and sharing ales. A statue of Horus and Bartha. A statue of some of the best damned adventurers I've known in my time. They will be missed. Brantburg has been in turmoil since the war. After the death of Lord Farquaad Brant during Brantburg's yearly games, his younger brother Urken took the throne in his place. Until it was revealed that Urken Brant himself was a doppelganger during the Great Battle. No one knows what happened to the real Urkenbrandt, and it's best if we don't. When dealing with demons, ignorance is surely to be better than knowledge. With the end of the ruling family, the people of the city elected a new leader, Reeve, the former bartender of the Slaughtered Ox Inn. His first decree, the swamp to the southwest is to be free land and no longer part of the kingdom. It shall be left alone, it shall belong to those who dwell there henceforth. Which brings me to Trek and Fona. The real victims of all of this. Two previously harmless ogres who wanted nothing other than to be left alone. To live out their days together in their home they know as the Swamp. They both gave their lives in the great battle, helping to slay not only a dragon, but hundreds of orc and troll. We could not have done this with any of this without Trek. He will be greatly missed. The guild buried both of them outside of their swamp home, holding hands in their grave, just as they did in life, up until the last moments. They will be missed. Bavar? He's doing well. I don't see him often, but when I do, he asks about you and how you're doing. He's decided to take a backseat to adventuring as of late. I can't say I blame him. At our age, I should be doing the same. He's become a full-time trainer for the Falkenheim army, which hasn't stopped him from training himself. Far from it. He trains in the high-altitude mountains with Dolph and the other frost giants, in preparation for anyone who wants to try to take their land, or even threaten our own. 
He visits the guild every now and then, with new tales of the mountains or of the growth of Falkenheim and its army. He even helps out on the occasional quest, just for old time's sake, but not too often. Ovar has become so fixated on training and becoming stronger, a champion of Tempest indeed. He's taken Trevor under his wing, who's now become a formidable fighter, if you can believe that. This combination of magic and newly acquired physical prowess has created quite a unique fighting style for him, and a, a unique role for him in the Falkenheim army. There are a few more, though I believe they joined us after you left. There's Lars Hafton's son, a large Nord from the north, who came to us from Bavar's death, actually, another champion of Tempest. But after receiving his second chance at life and fighting to secure the future of Falkenheim, he retired from adventuring to focus on his family. He works as a blacksmith now, alongside Calder and Cobb in the Market District, as well as a trainer for the new army recruits, showing them skills of survival and combat from the far, far north. He does not seek out conflict, but should his brother Bavar ever truly need him, he'll be there. And then there's Bert, a strange old halfling, yet the quickest one I've ever seen even quicker than the cat. He came to us when we needed him most, though none of us quite know where from. He's resting lavishly now, amongst his wives and family. Should you ever want to visit, they make the best rabbit stew in all of Faerun. Speaking of the cat, Jakku is now the guild leader of the famed Night Knights, the very thieves guild that almost got him killed. Sent him on the path that led him to adventuring with us on that forsaken island all those years ago. Is poetic, really. And as for the other of our old group, Bjorn, he returned home to Axholm after the battle, with most of his dwarves, but he continues to adventure with the fraternity of maidenless ne'er do wells from time to time. If you ask him, bashing skulls is much more fun than governing, and I believe him. Plus, he's becoming more and more convinced that he's unkillable. And I'm becoming more and more convinced that he is unkillable. I've never known a crazier dwarf in all my time. Though he's set his sights on a new task as of late, a harder one than he's ever faced. He's decided it's time to find a proper dwarven lass and make some heirs. A noble quest indeed. And as for the other wizard, he took no time to rest after the battle. Trondavius, along with some colleagues from the College of Evermeet, and his new mysterious companion Rune, set out to find the last of the phylacteries of Theron Galandel. So he can permanently wipe his stain from the face of Faerun. And when he succeeds, he plans to return to Evermeet with Rune and help him find out who he once was. And who he shall be in this world. Rune is a strange being. Some sort of machine with a soul bound to it that's been reawakened by some strange and old magic. The soul remembers nothing of who it once was, or how it got there. A truly terrifying experience, and one I do not envy. There are legends of a particular elven blade singer lost to time that could be him. Time will only tell. It's clear that Rune needs some guidance in this world, and Trondavius will be the best to aid him. He no longer adventures with the guild, though he says he will always be there to help us and guide us should we call upon him. Every year on the anniversary of Horus' death, Trondavius finds a tiefling village or settlement to help out in his memory. Last year it was the Red Ruby, and it was good to see them all again, despite such circumstances. Pass that bottle of wine over, would you? With our victory in the lands and the impact our guild had, we've grown immensely, going from a small group of outlaws being hunted to the largest, most prestigious guild in Nefredil in a span of five years. Truly humbling. The strange drow fellow Vorden and his friends Leopin Op and Zachrin have become the most effective group in the fraternity, showing the new guildies how to adventure and to make it home alive and a bit richer. Though they unnerved me at first, I've grown quite fond of them. Even Vorden, though he's a weird one. Leopinop can outdrink even the sturdiest of dwarves in Zachron. His sense of humor is strange, but he's one of my favorite smoking companions. No offense, Quasar. I'd share a bowl of my finest pipe weed with either of you any time. Speaking of which, 
Let us have another. As for myself, I've grown old, past some 60 winters now, and yet I feel energized, renewed, and strangely motivated. I keep to myself most of the time, especially at night, returning to the woods and wandering, watching, guarding. I make my rounds to visit those I call my friends when my paths should draw near to theirs. I bring them news of my findings and tales of my travels in exchange for theirs. However, this note from Tron Davius, this changes everything, my friend. He's found the final phylactery. Let us finish this.